morning and happy Juneteenth. Let's rise as we're able this morning and start by singing our opening song, We've Come This Far by Faith. I'm sorry. Step by step. <laughs>
gracious God of justice, you have been concerned with and on the side of the oppressed since the beginning of time. When the oppressors put their feet on the necks of the Israelites, you lifted your hands against those that caused oppression. We raise our hands to you in praise and service, O God of justice, our great emancipator. We seek your guidance as we work to restore the dignity of our children, dignity that has been marred by blood running in the street. In the spirit of the prophet Amos and of our forefathers, we declare, let justice roll on like a mighty river and righteousness like a never failing stream. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I want to welcome you all today on this uh, sunny Father's Day uh, Sunday in Southern California. And especially we would like to welcome those who are visiting with us. And if you are visiting with us, would you just raise your hand so we can give you a little gift of a flower and some information here and give them a hand. We also welcome our online viewers, uh, you who join us every week uh, electronically. We consider you part of our church family and welcome you to participate in every part of this service. I'm going to ask you all to stand together one more time and to share the uh, peace of Christ and also the love of Christ with your neighbor. Step by step. Our first reading this morning is from Psalm 146 from the Inclusive Bible. Hallelujah! Praise Yahweh, my soul. I will praise you all of my life. I will sing praise to my God while I live. Do not trust in rulers, in mortals, in whom there is no salvation. When their spirits depart, they return to the earth. And on that day, their plans perish. Happy are those who help, whose help is the God of Israel, whose hope is in Yahweh their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in it. Yahweh, you keep faith forever. You secure justice for the oppressed. You give food to the hungry. You set captives free. You give sight to the blind. You raise up those who were bowed down. You love those who do justice. You protect strangers. You sustain orphans and the bereaved. But you thwart, thwart, you know what I mean, the way of the corrupt. Yahweh will reign forever. Your God, Zion, through all generations. Hallelujah. Please rise in body and in spirit as you, as you are able. Yeah. Oh. 
The gospel reading this morning is from Luke 4, verses 18 to 19 in the New King James Version. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because God has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. God has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set a, at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks to be to God. Amen. Pastor and Kevin, our worship committee, for allowing me another chance to bring some words of hope to our sisters and brothers and others here at Founders. We have a true and a rightful emancipator, and I want to make sure you've heard about him. <laughs> Today we celebrate by taking from our past that which is good and bringing it into the present order to make positive changes for the future. Even though the African American past is a painful legacy, there is still much joy there as well. Our four parents were able to pass on a love for community, a love for God, the only true God, the God that Jesus speaks about in the Bible in John 17, 3, and a love for all people despite their enslavement. What a great way to begin our 152nd Juneteenth celebration, passing on the things that are important and letting go of the things that are not. There is a widely known prayer that is often set to music. We call it the Lord's Prayer. However, there is another musical prayer that is not so widely known. And it comes out of our own African culture. Lift every voice and sing. It was written by James Weldon Johnson. We call it our Negro National Anthem. In the first and second stanza of this song, Johnson addresses his words to the African-American community. But in the third stanza, he addresses his words to God, and it constitutes a prayer of petition. It goes like this. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, 
Thou who has brought us thus far on our way. Thou who has by thy might led us into the light. Keep us forever in your path, we pray. Least or last our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee. Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand true to our God, true to our native land. Happy Juneteenth, sisters and brothers. I've got a question that I'm going to throw before you this morning. How can a slave know that they are free if they did not hear it? How would they know they're free if somebody didn't tell them? For two and a half years, the slaves in Texas did not know that they were free. For two and a half years, the people who declared f freedom from President Abraham Lincoln's enactment of the Emancipation Proclamation didn't believe they were free. If you don't know you're free, you can't believe you're free by the way you're treated. Nothing's changed. Working, doing the dirtiest of works, getting no pay, still mistreated and abused. How are you gonna know? The two and a half years black people an abolished system of race-based chattel, slavery remained because someone forgot and didn't tell them. <laughs> this Monday coming is Juneteenth, and it is our annual holiday. It is celebrated by African Americans and others to commemorate 1965, June 19th, when the slaves in Galveston, Texas, finally heard the Emancipation Proclamation of Freed slaves. It's a day that black communities across the nation, especially Texas, celebrate freedom in America. While the recent racial tension, this stuff still goes on, it remains at center stage. Juneteenth is a day that people of different backgrounds, different cultures, can unite and celebrate freedom and progress. As a black Texan, I celebrate Juneteenth with a cultural pride and humble reverence. That's my red soda pop up there. That's my watermelon in that bowl. And I would have brought you some barbecue, but I didn't want you sitting out there smelling it and being hungry. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> We lift our voices in honor of our ancestors who labored toward freedom and in celebration of the triumphs of African Americans born out of freedom. As a black member of Founders Metropolitan Community Church, it is my greatest joy to share and entwine my culture and my heritage and edification of a gospel-centered community of light, pursuing racial reconciliation and sexual reconciliation, cultural reconciliation. I celebrate Juneteenth because it commemorates the day that freed black men to be doctors and presidents and black women to be, somebody told me, doctors and nurses 
But the thing that really sticks out with me, we can be a first lady. You didn't have to look at Michelle twice. She was a first lady. In Texas, we had a black Catholic church, white priest, and a one family member. There were other Catholic churches in Denison, but black people were not allowed to go there. And another thing, black people were not Catholics. We were Baptists. <laughs> Juneteenth is a day to jubilantly celebrate freedom. Not only that, but Juneteenth is a day that teaches us all something important about freedom. It means nothing, though, unless we know we are free. After hearing the news that everybody was free, the soldiers did a personal check, and they had a countdown. And you believe they found people still hiding. They found one slave, and they asked him, why are you still cooped up in here? And he said, I'm a slave. I don't get out. I'm locked up in there every night. The soldier said, have you not heard? <laughs> the doors are open. So he pushed the door open and he said, look, there are no chains. There are no locks. You can get up right now. Check, walk out. You are a free man. Just as the history proclaims Abraham Lincoln as our emancipator proclamator for the freeing of slavery on June 19, 1963. I want to tell you about another one. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ, hallelujah, was the shackles of our servitude to sin. Jesus Christ was the shackle of our servitude to death. They've been broken. And we no longer must bow to and serve the pleasures of Satan. We've got to take the good that's been in our life. Take it and share it what people can use and what we can use to advance our future, not hinder our future. For the Christian, Juneteenth is more than just a holiday for our black brothers and sisters and others. Juneteenth is a reminder of our true and our rightful emancipator proclamator in Jesus Christ who abolished sin who freed us from the chains of his rule by the shedding of his blood on the cross. Like I said this morning, you have to believe that. If you don't believe it, you can't go out and share it. Juneteenth is a reminder that our true and rightful emancipator proclaimed our liberty, our freedom, when he spoke the words on the cross, sisters and brothers, it is finished. It's over. It's over. No more slavery. No more. Once we were slaves because we didn't know. We did not believe we were free. Last but not least, we didn't hear we were free. No one told us we were free in Jesus, true and rightful emancipator. However, we were told Jesus didn't love black people. Jesus didn't die for black people. They are not fully human. Number two, I remember as a little girl in Denison, Texas, and, and I used to hear 
my sisters and brothers, uh, they didn't know they were related to me at that time, my white sisters and brothers. Te in Texas, they didn't know. They didn't know. And they used to say, I don't know why the Negro is singing and shouting and Why aren't they so happy down there in those woods? They don't have a soul. But they said, we beg the difference with you. <laughs> we beg the difference with you. In Luke 9, 16, it said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, to open prison doors to those who are bound. Jesus, the true and rightful emancipator, came to free us from whatever confines us, from whatever entangles us, our emancipator proclamator came to free us from whatever oppresses us. Our true and rightful emancipator came to defeat our adversary, Satan. Satan, we're going to tear your kingdom down. Satan, we're going to tear your kingdom down. You've been building your kingdom all over this land. Satan, we're going to tear your kingdom down. Satan, we're going to pray your kingdom down. Satan, we're going to pray your kingdom down. You've been building your kingdom all over the land. But Satan, we're going to tear your kingdom down. Woo. We, have, we have a true and a rightful emancipator that came to lift the spirit of heaviness and to restore our joy. So we can praise and we can glorify him. Brothers and sisters, Juneteenth reminds us that we have received the good news of great joy that Christ has set us free never, ever, ever to be enslaved again. In Jesus Christ, the shackles of our slavery to sin and death have been broken. We no longer must bow to and serve the pleasures of old Satan. In Jesus Christ, we are free from rage, anger, lust, adultery, jealousy, addiction, guilt, shame, any other heaviness or behaviors that follow us around. On the cross, Christ destroyed the institution that would abridge our freedom. Sin and death are no more. We're no longer slaves of rebellion. <laughs> We've been set free, so we are free indeed, John 3, 36. Juneteenth is also called for the Christian to mention. Knowledge of freedom demands believing in freedom, which requires hearing about freedom, which implies telling about freedom. Yet another cannot tell anyone about freedom unless they are God sent. Jesus Christ has sent all who know and believe in him to share this gospel, the gospel of salvation. And you also were included, blacks, gay, lesbians, bisexual, transgender, and others. You were included. Let nobody tell you differently. When you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, that of the promised Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1.13. We, we got to go. We got a job. We got a mission. And we must go and share the gospel 
of our true and rightful emancipator. As a community of gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people, are we free? Are we still telling people when we go into a supermarket or a clothing market or an entertaining place and they said, oh, is that your sister? Is that your brother? <laughs> no, that's, that's just a friend of mine. Been with that woman 50 years, been with that man 30 years. Are you free? Are you free enough to tell somebody which church you go to now, not the church you used to go to? But can you tell them about Founders Metropolitan Community Church? Can you feel free enough to tell them? Can you feel free enough to tell them about this Jesus that raised you up off of your sick bed? Can you tell them that God was so unhappy that God helped to change the rules so that we could be husbands and we could be wives. We don't have to be sisters and brothers all the time, even though we are in Christ. We are. Freedom. Are you free? Keeping what's good enough. Yeah, we got some past things that's happened to us, but we don't want to live off of those past things where that they are not going to promote us. We're going to take them, and we're going to use them to advance our future. We're going to advance them to build our churches. We're going to advance them to help our babies, our teenagers, who are out there not knowing who they are, scared. Because somebody as old as I am is hiding who I am. Free. Free to be like grandma. When I was in the church over on Washington in Comey, a kid was collecting coins, 25 cents a head, to show his friend a real live lesbian. 25 cents a head. So we were in choir rehearsal, and he knocked on the door, and we let him in, and he said, are y'all lesbians? And everybody in the choir said, yes. And he put out his hand and collected his 25 cents. But then he came back to the door, and he looked me straight in my eyes, he said, you too, Grandma? I said, yeah, baby, it doesn't go away with age. <laughs> so this Juneteenth, let's join the thousand of people who will be coming together all across America to celebrate that famous holiday with family and friends. And I would like for you to join me in remembering that Jesus Christ is our true and rightful emancipator of the Emancipation Proclamation from slavery and sin, bringing us into the eternal freedom. Together, let us herald the grace-filled freedom, giving gospel that Jesus Christ would go and tell another. He did not send anybody. Did Jesus send anybody to tell us that we are free? Jesus told us himself. You are free. So we have no excuse, Skip. <laughs> we have no excuse. We've been told. We are free. And I want you to know mm, mm, mm. our true and rightful emancipator, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, fully man and fully human.
created all humanity, all, all humanity in his image and has set us free. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. some doubts this morning see me after church I can tell you how to follow Jesus he's waiting on you waiting on you I love that, Reverend Barbara. It's not just enough to believe. You got to do something about it, right? Amen. Amen. Um, for those of you who are joining us online, we uh, invite you uh, right now to take some time and uh, get together the juice, crackers, bread, whatever you might be using to participate in communion with us. And for those of you here, we have a few announcements of uh, events coming up. One is that this coming Saturday, June 24th, we're asking all current and future leaders to attend an important workshop to envision our future and plan for the upcoming transitions that we have as a church. And so we're going to uh, start at 9, we'll gather, and the workshop will actually start at 9.30, and we'll conclude around noon. And then we're going to give teams and ministries the opportunity to work together on crafting their vision and plans, especially for the upcoming time between August and November, or for the teams to set a time within the next three weeks 
to uh, meet together to create their plan. So we'd like for you to RSVP any board member or email board at mccla.org if you plan to attend. And um, let me just say that our vision process has begun and so we have special forms uh, in the back of the church that we would like for you to pick up on the way out uh, so that you can uh, uh, write on these forms. They're called discerning our motivating vision. And then uh, uh, if you've already written yours, you can bring it to the altar and, and put it up here during worship. Uh, or give it to a member of the vision team uh, or to a board member. Many of you know Glenn Payne, a longtime member of our church. He is, uh, has a birthday coming up. He will be 92 years young. And downstairs in the fellowship hall, uh, Glenn, for years, would mail birthday cards to everybody in the church on their birthday. It was his ministry. And downstairs in the fellowship hall, we have a birthday card that you can sign uh, and that we uh, will uh, send to him with your well wishes. Uh, our hospitality team is also needing some help. We're looking for a few volunteers to help make coffee, set out snacks once or twice a month. If you have that uh, hospitality gift, uh, we invite you to volunteer and contra contact Reverend Kevin at mccla.org. Uh, this morning, we also want to say a special thank you to Transformation Unity for representing us at the recent Trans Pride event. Thank you for making a difference and sharing our message. And last but not least, today is Father's Day. And um, to all fathers and grandfathers and those who identify as fathers, if you're in the leather community, you might be a daddy. Um, <laughs> we want to say a big happy Father's Day. If you're a dad, stand up or grandfather. Let us recognize you. Amen. So um, as we prepare to receive our offering, I'd like to remind you that you, each one of us through our gifts are uh, uh, supporting a wonderful ministry here at the church. Uh, we have, if you look at the back of your bulletin, I think there's like 28 different groups who meet in the church, AA groups, uh, meditation groups, uh, uh, groups making a difference. In addition to those, there is a uh, startup church that meets in our basement called Beautiful Gate. Their attendance is running at uh, an average of 40 people a week. And they're having a really big impact on the, uh, on the community. And uh, as well as our, uh, the preschool here where kids can receive quality, high quality daycare. Uh, I wanted to mention those things because they don't happen without you and without your generosity and your giving. So I wanna say thank you and as we uh, give the offering today, let's give with gratitude for what God is doing in our midst.
Spirit may fall afresh on them, multiply them, allow them to be used for good use, to feed the hungry, to teach those who need to know and learn and hear the truth that you love them just as they are. Allow them to be used so that those who still doubt in your love can embody that love and take that message out into the world. Bless those who have given and those who yearn to give and those who give in spirit. In Christ's holy name we pray, amen. amen. So as we prepare for this table, for this sacred moment, I ask you to unite in me. You know, from the moment we walked in, we've been praying. From the moment we walked in, we have been opening ourselves. And so we pray that this table represents that reconciliation, that presence where God unsticks our mouths, that we can proclaim unto the world that there is a God that loves us just as we are. That we don't have to be afraid to be who we are. That we can allow God's light that, that shines in us to shine out brightly. And the world does a pretty good job of trying to dim that light. But God is greater than the world. And God is greater than any moment. So I pray that God multiply the blessings in our lives. That united as one family, we can truly center ourselves so that everything we do, everything we say, everything that we think embodies the one true God so that we can proclaim ourselves as children of the God that made us to believe that we are free. And because we can believe we are free, we can also believe that we are included in this table. For on that fateful night, a night that changed all of humanity, he took bread. In giving thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. And when you gather, simply remember me. In likewise manner, he took a cup, blessing it, he gave thanks. Fruit of the vine created by your people to nourish us, to free us, to replenish us. In the same token, he said, this is my blood which will be shed for you for the salvation of all people, for the forgiveness of all sins. When you gather, simply remember me. I ask, loving God, that your spirit fall afresh upon these gifts. Fall afresh upon the people that have come to believe that you love them just as you are. May your body, may your living vine replenish us refresh us give us the energy that we need so that we can go out into the world and shine into the world the light that you have given us this we pray in the one who came to redeem humanity and the people say amen in order to prepare for this serving of the feast i now ask our ushers our alkalites and our servers to come forward at this time. I want you to remember those, I may be preaching to the choir, but I want you to remember, and oftentimes we take this for granted, that this is an open table. And this table is open at all MCCs all over the world. That you come just as you are, just as God created you to be. And those of you who are visiting for the first time, please know that there's nothing holding you back, that you are welcomed at this table because God has made a way for you. The feast is prepared. Come and join us.
our service. You must go. You must tell. We have a mission. We got to get the word out. We are the only hands, the only feet, the only mouth that Jesus has today. He's counting on us, and I'm counting on you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and I am to go and tell you about the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. You are free, sisters and brothers. God made you beautiful people. God made you, and I love you. Have a blessed day.